See, I have been to this place on and off. Right? And on and off, I know what it is about. Right? Now, for the first time, I I I research part, the research part. The whole idea of this started from after seeing the research park. I always heard about it, etc. Et now, fundamentally, a question arose in my mind. To answer that question, and I want to detail that question fully, is what I am exploring with you. And in a sense, the answer to that question will involve your entire life experience. And let me explain why. If we go back to the very beginning origins of technological education in India, and the kinds of things that inspired why technological education is so important in India. If we go back to the famous Bombay Plan of 1944, which inspired Nehru and the Congress as to the path India should take, there are significant sections in there devoted to scientific and technical education. Next, we come to the Sarkar Committee. And that report came around 1946, which again outlines the role of scientific and technological education institutions in India. And finally, in 1958, Parliament passed a scientific policy resolution. These three seminal documents put together give us an idea as to what the original vision was for setting up the IITs. Now, I will say, given the fact that I have been part of the IIT system, I have been always knowing what is happening in all the IITs. In my opinion, the IIT Madras Research Park is the only institutionalized form in which the original vision has been successfully implemented as to what these elite institutions, the role they had in India's development. Which is why it is utterly fascinating. The way those vision statements are written, it looks to me as if such part should have been there in 1970 itself, where the need, technological needs of the country and the strength of the academia are brought together in an institutional form. Now, what is amazing is to me that finally it took one professor, that is you in one IIT, to realize this vision. This vision which should have been realized decades earlier by many, 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 many people. That to me reveals what exactly was happening in the field of technological education in India, the politics behind it. The economics behind it and I find it utterly fascinating. I mean, I would imagine, I mean, I don't know this, but I would imagine a more successful example of very rapid development of technology like China has many such variations of research paths, academic industrial interactions compared to India and somewhere we have missed the boat. So on the one hand, I see your vision of IIT Madras Research Park as something glorious, I also simultaneously see a failure of the overall Indian political technological establishment to create a hundred such institutions. Which is why I see your achievement is very, very unique and vital as a path giver, as a proof of concept of what Hundreds of technological institutions all over India must be consistently doing. And which is why the, this story of how you managed it should be broadcast to the maximum number of people as possible. And all my questions are going to be around this concept. Oh. This uh, reminds me of some a very important incident in my life. Um, and I'll begin with that. Um, I have not gone through the three documents that you talk about. Heard about that bits and pieces. But, you know, when did I first hear about this also is very interesting. 
it was 1970. I had just graduated from school and had written the IIT entrance examination, not knowing much about it, just because somebody told me to write it, I had written, I had your question or comment reminded me of an incident of 1970. Uh, I had just finished my school, had written IIT exam, entrance exam, joint entrance exam and had got a seat at IIT Kanpur. I did not know much about IIT and I had written because somebody told me. At that time, in our eyes, IIT didn't even have that much of glamour. But I had decided to go to IIT Kanpur because a cousin of mine had told me and he was there. My grandfather, maternal grandfather, used to live in a village in Bihar. All his life he has lived there. And I had used to spend a lot of time with him couple of months every year pretty much, was very close to him. But in the last few years, 68, 69, 70, I had not gone there too much. And I came to know that he was very excited that I am going to IIT Kanpur. And he kept on sending letters saying, I must visit him before going to IIT Kanpur. So I went to meet him. He actually told me something, he was quite excited, told me something and the interesting thing is that I heard that but I didn't, didn't register, it can't, it did not make much sense to me at that time. But I remembered that he had he was excited and he told me something. Much later after I had finished my B.Tech at IIT Kanpur, I had gone to US, studied there, taught there, came back to India in 1981. In 1982, I went back to him and asked him, remember that you had told me something. I want to rehear what you told me. And it took some time to remember, but he did tell me a very interesting incident. He says around 56, 57, Nehru had announced this formation of five IITs. And my grandfather was a Gandhian. He had even fought, was there in the independence movement, had gone to jail, was a strong follower of Gandhi and later on of Vinova Bhave. And people like my grandfather was a little perplexed. What is this going on? A group of them went and met Vinova Bhave and told him that, you know, we fought independence movement as a to bring in a egalitarian society. And here, Nehruji has announced this setting of this institute, which looks like very elitist institute, with involvement of universities from outside the country, with lots of money and things like that. So they had a question to you know, why is this what we fought for? Now he also told me that Vinova Bhave looked at us and as usual he did not make any comment immediately. He said an interesting question, go and talk to village elders, what do they think about this and let us discuss four to four, five months down the line, that is the amount of time that he used to but think about something and we will discuss this issue that was setting up of IIT right? is creating this elitist institute right? and he 
said that we had did this. We did this and came back, asked what happened. He says, well, it was a two day meeting and we concluded that what Nehru ji was doing was right. I said, how come? You have for egalitarian systems and here a elitist system was being created. He said, we figured out that every society needs something which drives excellence. Because that excellence is supposed to provide the direction and leadership to the society. And we always had such elitist institutions, so called elitist in Takshashila or Nalandas. And it is very important that in Nalanda war may go on, the society may be otherwise ravaged and yet that institute will continue to flourish. When wars used to take place, people used to bypass that and they used to guarantee that enough resources will be provided. It was a kind of consensus and we believed that setting up IIT is setting up of institutes of that kind. I then asked him the question. And he had anticipated the question that, but how does one know that IITs are delivering that or Nalandas were delivering that? He gave me a very interesting perspective, which also came from this whatever conference or whatever happened with Vino Abhavi. He said, if the society is doing well, then the institute has done the job. And if the society is not doing well, the institute has failed in its responsibility. I turned around and said, but how can you blame us who have now graduated from IITs? for the state of the society. After all, I am not in that position to influence, I am not. He cut me out and he says, you got the best education, you are amongst the best, picked up as best, you got the best education, you had the best teachers, you had the best resources. If you cannot fix all the problems of the society, then who else can? So you cannot ask the question, but what can I do? The graduates of IITs cannot ask the question, but what can I do? They are supposed to fix, provide leadership to the society so that the society flourishes. And he told me that you should commit yourself to doing this. But you graduated from IIT. Does not matter what the problems are. You have to fix it. You can never ask the question, but what can I do? To me, that has been the guiding principle in my life. Whatever I do, whatever the problem is, I have to figure out the solution. I have to do something. I cannot sit back. So, I think this is behind and it kind of links very well with the question that you posed, the way IITs were formed and the dream with which IITs were formed. And I agree with you, IITs 
have done well but have failed to deliver on their dreams. Personally, what did it lead me to? One thing that IIT did for me, IIT Kanpur when I was a student, is I first of all, I before that I lived a very kind of protected life, knew about my family, did not know much about the country and the society. IIT actually taught me about the society. IIT Kanpur that way and I remember that I studied there when two very strong movements were sweeping India. One was a Naxalite movement, another was Jay Prakash Narayan movement. Against corruption, against the what Indira Gandhi was doing. And we all got educated in that kind of milieu. And we realized that our society, even though maybe you have been moving a bit, has not been doing well. There is a huge amount of poverty. We are not leaders in anything. We are not moving per se. This kind of hit us hard, at least hit me very hard. And somewhere while I was a student, kind of committed myself that I will work for the country and not just for my family and myself. Of course, I have to take care of myself and my family, but I will work for the country. Circumstances, emergency got declared, circumstances made me leave the country, went go to US, I studied, I did my master's, PhD, taught there and as soon, first opportunity I came back, 1981. I had all kinds of ideas, I had various political influence, particularly I was influenced quite a bit by left at that time. I came back and before joining IIT Madras, I decided to spend 4-5 months try touring India, meeting different people, figuring it out. My first part of the journey took me to Bihar, the area today of Jharkhand. And I spent almost 35 to 40 days there, maybe a little less, maybe 25 days, I don't remember. It was eye-opening. First of all, I realized that our situation was much worse than I had till then figured out. I saw the coal mine workers there, the mine workers, not just coal, mine workers there. The way they were treated, the way the women were treated. Almost every woman had to sleep with the contractor. I met large number of them. They used to work 14 hours a day. They used to drink what's called tadi, huh? and so that they can keep themselves cool and work for a miserable life. I saw a lot of problems. But that period also got me rid of few things. First, the so-called then that time, the CPI ML or Naxalites, I met even them. I realized one thing that while they definitely realized the ills of the society and were determined to fight against it, they had no constructive program and had no idea what to do in the how to build a society, even if they succeed in getting into power. And I could, I realized that they would be no better than anybody else. The second thing was, there were other left parties, CPI in particular. And I saw that they were part and parcel of the exploitation of the situation. But it was not this versus that. It was just that I saw that politics was very dirty and none of the politics had really a solution to the country problem. And by the time I landed here at IIT Madras, I realized that no, politics, I, I cannot be part of that politics. In 
it is therefore i was my determination to work for society was very much there and in the meantime i had also visited my grandfather again and got that whole thing which reinforced saying that i have to work for the society and yet um i had no idea what to do so it's here in my years of iit what i learned what i understood that the idea started coming up first of all people who do not realize this particularly kanan you may have some idea merin will practically have no idea of what 1981 in india was i'll give you some very simple things which will give you a picture and all this has finally culminated into the kind of thinking that i have today first i wanted a simple telephone at my home i was a faculty member at iit madras the third largest city in the uh, country and uh, in iit campus i wanted a telephone at my home i applied for one it took me 8 years to get a telephone i needed a telephone so that i could talk to my parents once in a while who were in calcutta to my mind it did not make a se- make sense because i had just come from us where i got the phone within 2 hours why do even well off people in india in middle of city take 8 years to get a telephone i wanted to buy a two wheeler so that i can move around this beautiful campus why it madras such large campus somebody pointed out to me a bajaj chetak i went to their showroom looked at it liked it price was something that i could afford i said fine i'm going to buy this they asked me for the color this that asked me to make a check they actually asked me to make a check of a smaller amount i thought that i asked when will i get the delivery this person looked at me perplexed and i do didn't understand why what did i ask a wrong question this sir you will be in a waiting list waiting list to buy a scooter how long will it take I told that if you are lucky it will take 4 years i had no choice i was bachelor i was sitting at home trying to cook my meals and i found a stove a kerosene stove which you pump and you could cook my meal i wanted a gas lpg gas i went to book lpg gas and by now i was well prepared that we have to wait for long time in india one has to wait price that well let me go and book there was a old man who when i told him that i want to book a gas cylinder he asked me when did you do the booking i said no, i never done the booking so parents must have done the booking i said no, no no my parents never lived here they were they were in calcutta i mean i have come here there is no booking in the past for me he looked at me he had a specs he moved the specs and said well no i'll bring the register you can register but i do not think you will get this in this lifetime but if you register your children will be these are the kind of incidents that i'm seeing and i'm not talking about people with less resources i'm not talking about rural india i'm very perplexed the only fallback group that i had here was a group of friends of ours we got together and formed what is called patriotic and people oriented science and technology ppst 
thinking that two seen signs and professor ambirajan and rajgopal were associated with us that we could actually make a difference several of them were in iit kanpur several were were from this place and we are trying to kind of figure things out this group was there i could raise some of the questions get some answers but really it was quite kind of this is the way india is but i also knew that politics is not the answer so while i was getting and ppst was teaching me two important things first of all it has it made me relearn gandhi i had a child i had taught by my parents my grandfather to respect gandhi and learned a bit about gandhi but after that somewhere it was it was forgotten ppst in fact talked about gandhi and so we relearned rediscovered gandhi we rediscovered indian traditions science and technology in 18th century in india maybe i'll talk about it some other sometime later but this was going on and yet i was sitting at iit teaching a little uncomfortable that what am i doing am i spending enough time and i said while i was sitting here i might as well look at the industry what is industry doing fortunately i since i was a marwadi i had family relations with some industries of course it was in calcutta and so it was actually when i went to calcutta on a trip i started connecting to them to try to figure out what is the state of the industry and met them went to their company factories companies saw things and then they introduced me to a few industries here in tamil nadu also i went and visited a few industries came back with a very very kind of discomfort because all these industries i saw were importing full technology they had practically no research and development they were actually bringing in the technology and actually they were all screw driver manufacturing it putting it together and selling it and selling it at high prices I also realized that they had this licenses and quotas so they could only import so much and they made could make so much and therefore there were fairly large shortage of goods and since they all came from outside the country all these products were very expensive and therefore not affordable to most people it bothered me disturbed me i started asking questions in iit why are we not working with this industry the answers that i will get well iit is in the industry is not interested in our technology since they are getting everything from outside and they have they just produce this more or less what i saw so obviously what they were telling me was obviously truth but i also saw that the faculty here by and large did not make were not trying it there were few and i did get to meet a few faculty members who did try to do something and but by and large at least in electrical electronics area there was no one was even trying anything there is yet another aspect which i saw in my teaching that's related you know i had taught in a washington state university in the united states for about 18 months before i came here and here i was teaching iit madras students there was no comparison between the two sets of students iit madras students were much much brighter as compared to washington state university and yet i saw several differences first thing that i saw 
that the labs in Washington State University made much more sense and had a much more educational content and really taught them something as compared to IIT. And I tried to figure out what was going on. You know, so we had some lab equipment or lab kits in Washington State University. We had 30 of those kits. And when there were 60 students, a group of two will be actually given one set of equipment. We would define the experiment and tell them what they have to do a week before. They are supposed to reflect upon it, figure out, so do some background reading, would come. When they come there, we will actually point out what they will like to do. I, I used to give about a 10 minutes talk on how to go about doing it. And since they all had individual equipment, they will start building something, doing something. And I will go around discussing, looking at what they are doing. Somebody got something done, got stuck. I like try to help them. And if there was a mistake made, I will talk to the rest of the class. See, this is the kind of mistake that is made. We will not have to do that. There will be discussion. So about three, four times the class will come together. They will go back and the experiments will be done like this. Out here, the equipment was, there was only one set of equipment. At some case, two. Equipment was expensive, I was told. It was all imported. There was one technician, IIT employee, who knew how to operate that. And the equipment was too expensive for letting the, us allow the students to touch them. So you put all the students or maybe a bunch of students in front of him and this technician will do the experiment and ask all the students to note down readings. This is the same that we did in Hyde Kanpur. There was no difference. And then after noting down the readings, we are supposed to go back and prepare a lab report. We learned nothing. I remember in IIT Kanpur and I very soon saw the same thing happen in IIT Madras. That not only you copied each other's lab report, you in fact had template of the lab report of the previous few years and one of those report everybody was copying, not learning anything, something, somebody, some questions will be asked, but practically no learning. So the one of the first intervention that I did, I started asking my head of department, why can't we have 10 kids or 50, 12 kids and let the students play with it? They said, it's too expensive, there's no question. Then I said, why can't we build kits? Very simple one, maybe not as complex. And they said, how can you build the kits? So, we'll get it. So, some of my early work was, actually trying to build these kits, which can allow students to play and learn. But I had never built much, even in my master's, PhD, my work was all theoretical. But fortunately, there were few undergraduate students in my class who were much better than me and knew how to build some things. And when they saw my interest in building things, they will work with me. I was, I remember a person named Deepak Kanchandani who graduated in 1984 batch. Huh? There were others. There was Thomas Alexander. Hmm? Huh? They would, Deepak graduated in 83, Thomas Alexander graduated in 84. They will uh, start working with me and soon several people will join. We started making some. I had not even known what a digital AND gate or OR gate was. Never. When I studied in IIT Kanpur, digital was not there. In master's PhD, I never studied there. I did not know what a microprocessor was. Here, these people had better idea and we will together 
will study, they will help me, I will help them and we will start building a few things. Toys, I will say, nothing more than that, few kids, but we started building small things. Working with hands, building things. And since many youngsters were working at that, one time 30 undergraduate students did their project with me. All were building things, I just enabled them to. That gave me a very different perspective that actually things can be built. And I was continuing to visit some um, industry and there was one industry, WS Industries in Chennai that was making a power line carrier communication equipment which involved multiplexing of large number of voice channels and some data channels and sending it on a power line. And I had known that that kind of thing was being used by different um, industry. I had gone, visited them and some of the things that we were doing was somewhat related. So I actually figured out what they were doing. Also I was teaching communication. So I figured out what it was doing. I remember that there was a IET, Institute of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineer lecture, um, meeting, conference and I was asked to give a talk. And I went and gave a talk. And made a statement there, probably the first time publicly, that you know the industry by and large import everything, technology. Technology itself is expensive and they build these things and then they sell decent margin, but it will be very expensive. Nothing is being done in India. And I told them that here there is this company and I, I didn't realize that you are not supposed to name all these things. That time I said that it was making and selling it a, a lakh rupees, this power line carrier communication equipment, one such equipment. And you know, I told them that if they gave me one lakh rupees, I will build the whole technology myself and give them the technology. Somebody in a newspaper, I was too young, I was hardly 30 years at that time, 29 years, after 30 years wrote in a small column that Dr. Ashok Junjunwala of IIT Madras said something, something, something like this. And next day I get a call from the chairman and managing director of WS Industries that he wants to meet me. I should visit him. I heard about this and I kind of regretted that I made that statement and I thought that I will be in some amount of trouble. I walked into his office, he made me sit down and he says, you have said that. I said, yes sir, but I said that and I know what is involved and I have a number of young students who could actually do things, but I may have overstated. He turned around and said, if I give you one lakh rupees, will you build it? Now, 1 lakh rupees is very small today. It will not be less than a crore rupees at that time. I said, sir, sure, I certainly can. He took out a checkbook and wrote down a check of 1 lakh rupees and gave it to me. No proposal, nothing. And 1984, maybe or 83, I don't remember exactly. And uh, uh, got one of his senior R&D person saying that work with him. Let him build things. I am taking you away from the question that you were asked, but it will give you a lot of background perspective. It's all linked. It's all linked. I came back and announced to my young undergraduate students at that time saying that I have committed to build something like this and I knew all theory, I went up on board and saying this is what it is, this is the each block 
By that time, we had learned that much. A few things that I did not know, a few other students corrected. Students, I was learning from students. So you have to learn from students. This one thing that I have always lived in my life that students teach you as much as you teach students. Um, so uh, I said, this is what the Brown diagram is. This is what it involves. And a bunch of 15 students decided to work on this. And I worked for one year. One lab table, probably two times this size, three times this size. And here these people were all building, we were building the whole equipment. And with that money, we were able to buy all the components and learn, figure out what is going on. And this person from WS Industries, Venkat Subramaniam, he used to keep on visiting us, figuring out what we are doing right, occasionally helping us. Huh? end of a year, we had this equipment fully ready, working, prototype is working, full. It gives you the, occasionally it doesn't work, you have to shut it down, open, touch a few things, hit a few places, it will work. So the equipment was working and doing the functionality. But we had also known, number one, that this is not a technology. This cannot be productionized. This will not work 24 by 7. We had no understanding of what it will cost if you make it in large. So we had no understanding that whether it is commercializable. So in one sense, I was very happy. In other sense, I was feeling very guilty. The one year is approaching. So almost 11 months when we got it. And we realized that in one month is too short a time to get everything fully done. We will not be able to give them the technology which we had, which I had promised. I had sent a message to the WS Industries chairman, managing director, and he called me. He said, I will come and like to come and visit. I was very scared. But he came, I showed him everything and I told him, I'm very sorry sir, I don't think I will be able to completely do what you, I had promised, but this is what I have been able to do. He was mighty pleased. He was not upset at all. He didn't even use one word, negative word. He said, a shot, done very good job. I want to just take this to my factory, the whole thing. I said, of course, this is yours, but you know, this you cannot produce and leave that to me. Hmm? So he took it. And two, three months down the line, he suddenly gives me a call and say, can you come next morning? and visit me. I said about, you have something to discuss on this? He said, yes. So just come. So I went there. When I went there, I saw him sitting with three, four foreigners from Canada. Soon we found out that they were actually the one who was who had transferred him the technology and were selling every part which he was assembling and giving out. And he just asked me to sit down, introduced me, and he introduced me as a Professor Junjunwala. He came from US, went, told me he will do this technology and actually done the full technology. And at now the whole system is ready and it's a third of the price that you are giving to me, etc., etc. Once I tried to interrupt me, him, to tell him that neither are we ready nor, huh? but he kind of kept me saying, quiet and just went on. And then he took all of us with me following with them, took us around saying, I'll show you. And I saw on a table, big table, this equipment was kept in a glass case and he removed the glass case and he showed 
few lights blinking and all that was working. In fact, just about working. It's done. Now we are making the industrial prototype and in 2-3 months and it is you are selling me at 80, 75, 80,000 rupees. I am going to be able to do this under 30,000 rupees. Right? To discontinue this, we can discuss about the other equipment that we are working with, but this is something that I have to discontinue. So, he, we had lunch and soon after he saying that fine, you can go back. And I heard in the evening that the Canadian party has reduced the cost of the equipment to 33,000 rupees from their 80,000 rupees and he has decided to double the production and reduce the selling price also slightly. To me it came very very interesting thing. That I got a very different picture of industry. At one time my thinking about the industry are just kind of taking things from abroad and just stamping it out and they are not interested. I learned a few things that if you can really, really do something and promise to deliver what they need to make and sell, they are very key. They will even take risk. Big risk, 1 lakh rupees at that time was a very big risk. Second, you do something, you sincerely work, get somewhere. Whether you fully succeed or not succeed, they know how to go ahead. They know how to commercialize. It is not that they cannot commercialize. They know how to commercialize. They will make something out of it. We realize that we ourselves were learning and they were willing to be part of it. I realize the problem seemed to be with us. Industrialists want to do something. There may be industrialists who are so content with what they, they are doing. But others are hungry. They will grow. If we can show that we are willing to meet them and go there. And even if they lose money, that's fine. If they will figure out how to make money out of it. And till you learn to commercialize every work that you do, hmm? It's of no use. Actually, he made money out of our work. Huh? Our r and It's a very big learning for me. I started changing perspective. At the same time, something else, two other things that I heard about and learned, which started laying the foundation of a technology dream or uh, dream of for uh, research and development all the way to commercialization which this research park is. The second thing was something that we heard about. We had no role that happened in the country around 1985. The story of Nirma. There was this washing powder surf very expensive i remember that because i myself could buy only a small packet of that and occasionally use that rest of the time we used to use soap and rub which would take longer time to wash but well we will spend more time to wash because that surf was very expensive here came a company called nirma which decided to make detergent powder at a price which was one third of that of surf. And suddenly I, I could easily afford it. A lot of people in India could afford it. The powder was not as good as surf. It cleaned as well, but probably it had more bleaching. I know it used to also hurt your hand a bit, but it cleaned. And therefore, for most people who would spend a lot of time and struggle to wash clothes, it was a great thing. If, even if it meant a little bit rough on your hands, it enabled them to wash clothes much faster with much less labor. 
and they started becoming popular. The sales started catching up with surf. I also remember surf's statement saying, oh, this is a poor quality and we don't want to touch it. We want to stay away from it as much as possible. And here, this started overtaking it. And soon we started dominating the market. Of course, expanded the market. Expanded the market about four times and they had captured 80% of the market. Surf in fact went down. Out of few years, that Hindustan Weaver also came up with another powder similar to Nirma powder. It was a great learning experience for me. First, this was the first time I saw entrepreneurship. Here, somebody was not even there, created a company, came with a disruptive product. Kept in mind that India is a very large market for affordable products. Affordability played a key role. If you directly import and sell, it is too expensive for most of the people. Only a few percentage of people could afford it. But if you make something at a lower cost, even if it is little cruder, but it serves the purpose, it can create large companies. Many things were hitting my head that India needed entrepreneurship, India needed affordable products, India has a large market for affordable products, we only have to do that. And there was another story that was happening related to my telephone. Making a telephone call was impossible because there was no telephone. In yeah, The access that I had was one phone in the department there was only one phone in the whole department and there used to be a long queue to make a call. And if you ever try to make a long distance call, it will not come through. That's a time I was also involved here and there in one or two meetings and Sam Petroda came in. And I remember sitting up with him in one of the meetings and he told us for the first time that our problem with telephones is, is that it's just too expensive. It cost 40,000 rupees to install a telephone line. And the government was spending so much. And the revenue was made too meager. It will never pay back for the telephone. And that's the reason the government, it came from the government's budget. And since government had limited money, only so only number of telephones could be added. And that's the reason there is a huge shortage. He of course was involved in exchanges and he says instead of electromechanical exchanges we will make electronic exchanges that will bring down the cost. But we realized that it will only marginally bring down the cost. More on it later. But at that meeting this whole idea took place that why can't we if we can't get the telephone to everybody. Idea came up that why can't we have a telephone at every pan wala shop, the beetle nut shop. They are there in every street corner, they are open for 18 hours a day. If a phone is kept there, these PCOs that are kept there, they don't work, something goes wrong. But if we give it to that person and he allows people to make phone call and charges. That could at least make telephone accessible to many more people. And Petra said, yes, that can straight away be done. Until the next idea came. Do you know, many people want to make long distance call. But long distance call was so expensive. At that time, it was close to 20 rupees per minute. And 20 rupees per minute at that time is like I told you, like, mm, like 2,000 rupees per minute. And most people could not afford it. Even me, I, I, in my IIT Kanpur days, in five years, I had made two calls. In IIT, after I came to IIT Madras, I remember making only one call in three, four years. 
somebody came with the idea that you know in the evening hours and night hours the long distance lines are free why can't we make the call charges much less during that time the night hours are after 11 o'clock somebody says oh nobody will come to make a call at 11 o'clock and this pco std pcs were set up in this panwala shop or next to panwala shop and after 11 o'clock you will see a huge queue i myself went and made calls to my parents occasionally and from evening 7 to 11 one did at half the cost at night time one could do at quarter the cost again i saw the affordability makes such a with affordability there is a large market in fact initially i remember that uh, people sort of say this is amount of subsidy money that we have to provide to install this many number of telephones the number of telephone group tenfold we are talking about 100000 it became a million and soon we got to know that every phone was making more money huh was making 40000 rupees in 6 months and even if you share 20% with the local with the operator it was a great great business and since it was a great business it multiplied we had hundreds of thousands of such std pcos throughout the country and many of these std pcos were operated by young person men or women who would of course run this one phone then two phones and will also start selling a few things and we created a new business the new kind of entrepreneurship was the instrument imported no instrument was not imported there was a billing there was one which gave the metering that was not imported but expensive and we were challenged by the department officer at that time can you make a low cost one and i had come here and i got the same set of undergraduate students to start making it and we did make a something which was 20% of the cost of the existing equipment and we went and gave the technology we gave it to htl of course soon various people came and started making there was really nothing in that all that you needed to do was count the pulses and dis- display and we started making the std pco uh, um, um, booths also very very low cost and the whole thing became very very successful so lots of learning if i look at this whole period and the period this is from 82 to 86 i see few things india is a large market for affordable products if we decide to make products and affordable products we can actually do it at that time i thought our undergraduate students would be able to do few graduate students also joined it's not that they were not there uh, um, but they were that's the only was people that i knew who could do this um and entrepreneurship was a great way to develop suddenly this std pco came around that the whole market will develop and you will go to a remote area set up a std pco soon that area will develop so we saw that there are alternative ways of getting india to move we also realized that there is no magic in all these technologies a determined set of people can actually do that businesses were reasonably strong of course here and there the government would be enabler but like for example uh, um, surf and nirma case they played no role in std pco because telecom department came from the government they had certain role and it required like sam petroda to open it but there were people who were opposed to it the concept of initially we called it a panwala telephone it no reason first they said it will never make money you lose there will hardly be any people this person will lose that was all wrong they did not understand read the market they opposed this night time quarter charges huh? saying that if you do that 
we'll lose all the revenue because everybody will shift to night time. Till somebody pointed out that offices are not going to shift their operation in the night time just because of your phone calls. Huh? So, I'll say there was really no reason to oppose. But this was an early period and we got a lot of confidence. It is around this time, after our success of that power line carrier communication equipment that we made for WS Industries, we realized that many of the equipment that is needed by whether telecom or by railways or by uh, even defense or um, mm, control equipment for industry involve electronics, some hardware, some software, nothing which was magic, nothing that we could not design. And we are learning, we are reading the latest things also and it was fairly easy to figure out and say we can, we can do these things. So we started taking up projects from different industries, from different from defense to build this, to build that. And for that we needed people. I had the undergraduate students, yes, I had a personal rapport I could get because there were 30 students in class, 10 of them will, 15 of them will work, but that cannot have not scale. So to we realized that time that such kind of young manpower, and at that time we thought only IIT students can do it, bright ones, would be the main constraint. But there were events happening in the society. If I go back to 82, and another thing that used to take place, I had come to IIT Madras, by the way, there was no person who was recruited as faculty in my department for seven years, eight years before I did. And I had come from US. Nobody ever came from US. So people were kind of little perplexed. Who is this person who will come from US, go and join this department? Electrical engineering, electronics, is it? I started getting some visitors whom I had no knowledge. Normally, a typically a middle-aged person, they will come with their young son and daughter, 16 year old. And they will knock at my door and say, sir, we want to meet you. I said, who you want? What do you want? I said, sir, I have come here hearing about you. I want your help in getting my child admitted to engineering, to IIT. So I'll of course tell them that IIT requires joint inter examination and there is now no way we can help, I can help you. He has to prepare, there are this. Say, sir, any other engineering college. So I said, why not? Join. What's the problem? He says, no, sir, it is not possible. At that time, I started looking at why. What was the problem? I figured out that there were about 100 engineering colleges around the country. Graduating about 200 students on the average, 20,000 students a year. This is the total students that we graduated and we are just crossing 750 million people. That was the bottleneck. There was pee hunger. There were these young people, did well in their school, wanted to become engineers. Somehow because engineering would give them a decent career. And there were no engineering colleges. There were these 100 colleges set up by the government. IIT is being amongst that. It was really not enough to absorb these people, not satisfy these people. And it was true that many of the kids that they were bringing were very bright. It didn't take too long to figure that out. Around that time, it was probably 83, not 82. Jayalalitha under MGR came up with a program of setting up private engineering college. That these private engineering colleges will be set up and large number of these youngsters will be able to get educated there. 
IIT straight away took a very strong position against these colleges. IIT and I think central government also. Saying where will the teachers come from? There will be no good teachers, there will be no infrastructure, they will do very poor training and very poor quality students will be produced and given an engineering degree. The quality was used to sort of beat these colleges and would be colleges and saying they will go nowhere. Initially, I was part of it. Though in my mind, there was always a part of this criticism, but in my mind sort of saying that here these youngsters are coming, we are not able to absorb them. Hmm? And we are also saying private colleges should not be set up and probably private colleges will be bad. That is of course bad. Somebody will make money out of them. That is also bad. But is there an answer? But you know what happened? I was getting this project around 85, 86, 87 and the first set of these graduates from these colleges were coming. We needed people for uh, working. IIT students number were very small and then they will go abroad I did, and they anyway would not work with us after graduating. We needed people who could work with us in a longer time. Huh? I had difficulty in make, taking a multi-year project with undergraduate students can't do that. Six months is what they could do work. Breaking the total work into six, six months work, handing over was becoming very difficult. So, we started used to advertise, of course, people will come from Gindi Engineering College here and there and soon we started getting people from these private colleges. It was very clear that the quality was not good. When I used to, we used to interview them, the questions that they, we kept asking kept on going down and down and down. And we are very perturbed, and what can these people do? But very often we needed people and we took them. Saying maybe something can happen. To our shock, yes, they didn't know much. One thing I realized, however, they are very, once they were given a kind of job, they are very hard working and they are very willing to learn. And they were 21, 22, they were not 17, 18 undergraduate students there and we soon were able to create a team of the existing project staff and these new people and us playing a role and we will see since they work, many of them will work for 12 hours, 14 hours, just like our undergraduate students used to do when they were working on this project and in six months they will not be that bad. In a year I will say they will be reasonably good. Two years, three years, they were very good. And all this is happening in the electrical engineering block. They are all taking place in my department, in electrical engineering department. At one time, I remember 86 or 87, I had 60 such youngsters. All of them, there were two people from, one person from IIT, at Deepak. There were three, four people from Gindi Engineering College and other college. All of them were from private engineering college. And 86, 87, 30, 40 of them, and very soon they were building things. And they were learning. A lot of it is cross learning amongst each other. They worked for long hours. We also used to work with them. Very soon I realized, and this is also very, very important learning for me, even more than the role that entrepreneurship plays and affordability plays. There are biggest strength in the country is our young human resources, young manpower. It does not matter what college they went to. It does not matter that they did not learn as much in colleges. Many times our undergraduate students and from IIT also did not learn that much. Give an opportunity, a little bit inspired. You should tell them how important this product is. 
let's make this product together and they will work very hard learn from each other and soon start building and this is something that i've seen again and again and again for last 35 years we have seen people coming from these various tier 2 tier 3 even tier 4 colleges people coming from rural areas from people who will not work speak a word of english and yet they could do technology work build things set up complex experiments complex things they will build they will do hardware they will do software they learn and fortunately over time they will not just learn from each other and a little bit from us a lot of learning from each other but they also have today fortunately internet through which they will actually go search they will search together and figure out and learn things and build things you give them you inspire them inspire them give them a challenge and they will be some other people we soon realize that yes affordability is in india very important and you have to make products which are affordable we had realized that entrepreneurship can play a major role in development but i think the biggest thing that we realized is our human resources that our human resources and at that time only engineering though i would like to now sort of say not just engineering but even other human resources can be a very very important player for india future and they are very good they have to be trained they have to be given opportunity to learn they have to be learn from each other learn from peers learn from internet they have to be challenged they have to be made to believe that they are at least as good as anybody else in the world and they will do wonders this understanding became the foundation of the technology development all the way to commercialization that we are talking about today let me go back a little bit uh, every IIT, including IIT Madras, at some point or the other, started an industrial consultancy department or wing or whatever it is. Right? How do you see IIT Madras Research Park as the ultimate culmination of that? Because even when I was a student, the department was there, but it always used to be very minor, hardly anybody used to come. It's almost like a formality that such a department was there. You know. Now, it, 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 the question arises for me from both directions. On the one hand, entrepreneurs know that every IIT has such a department. On the other hand, professors know that if they interact with entrepreneurs, project money can come in and useful products can be made. In spite of that, why did it take so long to take off when there is an obvious synergy? And this seems to be true of all five. Yeah. Well, yes and no. I mean, I have to, yes, the industrial consultant. I think it takes this whole perspective of bridging industry, academy and divide and getting academia to participate in large scale industry work and all the way to successful commercialization is a hard work and early seats were there even i saw it there were a few faculty members who used to do a little bit work for industry they will largely work with their own students masters phd a few btech mostly masters phd then limited nobody did it at scale nobody attempted it at scale we also often found which also we also did that our early things which will even try to give it to industry industry will not take it forward if you look at my work with ws industries and what i gave them I could have interpreted it in two different ways. I could have interpreted it as a failure. That I did something which never made a product, never became successful. It was the chairman 
gave me a totally different perspective that finally I had to make money out of funding you and I have done that. One could sort of say well he worked against indigenous technology and just made money. I could have labeled him that this he did wrong. But I say wow marvelous. And even if I don't fully succeed, he is still ready to hold my hand. It is an attitude. I could have taken the wrong attitude and stopped. Of course, since then we have gone far away. Long. That was a period where we could do only that much. Now we can do much more. Actually, there is a second aspect of it which happened very big in the same period from early 80s onwards all the way and is very much linked in one way to many of the things that I talked about. The whole software industry, service industry in India. The whole software service industry started in early 80s, maybe late 70s but mostly early 80s, flourished. 80s really flourished like 90s by 2005 etc was a very big industry world celebrated what did they leverage the large number of youngsters that came from tier 2 tier 3 colleges they actually also leveraged our masters and phd master student of iit they didn't take too much of undergraduate Few, but not that much. But large number of young students were able to produce things. And one of the most important thing is that whatever work that they did was very respected in the West. They said, well, they did good work. Indians do good work. And Indians are very good at software. So they made quality products. Same set of people coming from tier 2, tier 3 colleges, which were linked down as uh, looked down and said that oh, this is all donation and all that. And it also showed the ability of these youth. Much of this learning, I remember uh, I went to an uh, Infosys training, they will take all these students. Their six months training was so good that, and after that, they will throw people into this. And the fact that you are working for outside, you will make also good money. Um, and the people who respected your products or your service made a difference. You of course started with very routine work. But another thing that people don't realize that from that routine work we have started getting doing more and more complex work, more complex work, more design work, combination of design and sophisticated work. And in some sense we are today the design house for the world. Yes, but people can point out, but you have not made products. Yes, we haven't made too many products. There are only few of them. Of course, Sridhar Vembu has made fantastic products, but not too many are made very good products. That's all right. That's our weakness. We need to do that. What we need to figure out what we did not do right and we did, but we need to celebrate. And there are good industrialists who made money, who made tons of money for themselves, tons of money for a large section of people of these youngsters gave them a very respectable job and they could move in and out to any part of the world and respected all over the world. It created huge confidence in India. It is a part of the same phenomenon, it is not different. We are talking about making products for India, they did service work for the world. It had the same basis. You Human resources become the most important thing. Human resources become the most important thing. That part is right. That you could do with this tier 2, tier 3 college people, graduates, you can do wonderful work. That part was right. What was not right, what this didn't bring was affordable product because we are not trying to sell it in India. You are selling it outside. So the affordability product wise didn't come in. Entrepreneurship did come in because a lot of these people gained some money, gained respect, gained conflict and themselves became entrepreneurs. 
I'll say C dot played a great role that Sam dot Petrona had set up. They actually tried to make hardware exchanges just like us again with these people. There were few IITs also, but a large number. Many of them came, went out and set up their own company. So, the question that one may ask, but what took so long? And I will come back to IIT. What took so long? Uh, well, I think it does take long. I don't think that ability to make product, making things and making it succeed takes time. And the only thing that I will sort of say is that the government never made it easy. Of course, software industry, since they were servicing outside the country, government didn't have much of a role. So it went faster. In any other indigenous product development, where you make product and sell in India, the government plays a role and government never understood this whole phenomenon by and large. I, I will say that we gained because of post liberalization a few things happened but still not enough government didn't support it what about iit since the question comes what about iits yes iits had this industrial consultancy department did a little bit of work here and there i can say from iit madras perspective the people who worked with industry were never respected as much as people who will, who will write papers. They were celebrated as good scientists. These were also just doing something. I faced this problem. I had to decide to opt out of that paper. paper. I did enough in my PhD in my early work and that kind of stuff said no, I'm tired because most of the, the papers were not were incremental papers and uh, to me yes could I have spent enough time figured out and started writing more very high quality papers possibly I could have my own study was very theoretical I don't know I may have that is a path that I could have taken around 83, 84. But I departed from that path. I said, no, I'll make products work, which nobody did. Hmm? So, I remember, I, for example, um, as I started doing this, there were a whole lot of obstacles, um, funding this. There, there was this industrial consulting department, but never make things easy. They will. They will agree to do some consultancy, small work. Never conceptualize that making the whole work and driving the industry to push it to the market was never a conception uh, of IIT. And IIT is looked at, okay, maybe it can do some earning, maybe it can do something, but never looked at it as equal. No IIT is Even though Professor Raju, who plays a very important role in IIT Madras in make, setting up an ICNSR, and giving it some amount of glory, he went as a director at IIT Delhi, but somehow it never got that respect. To some extent, the problem still exists, though I think Research Park has kind of broken that. It has shaken people. They don't know what to do. But I'll tell you, even for example, I got Bhatnagar Award in 19. When? 1997, 98? I don't know. What. Somebody had told me and I had done an application. I had forgotten about it. You know, when did I get to know about my Bhatnagar award? That was already awarded. The day it came in the newspaper at round noon, at 12 o'clock, my grandfather is reading a newspaper and saying, there is some Bhatnagar award. I had heard of Bhatnagar Award announced and he is reading that and he reads the front top page and goes to the inside page and there he sees my name. I couldn't believe it. I had not expected it because till that time Bhatnagar Award was never not given to people except those who would publish, 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 publish. I published. But I won't say my publications. 
I never went after publications. First time it kind of sort of said, no, somebody who can build things and who can make important things for the country can be given an award. Few more times it has been done, but still by and large that is not respected. I will say even now it is not respected. Except that IIT Madras is as part, they don't know how to deal with it. It has become too big. It, it, and now other IITs are trying. And to the extent that they are not, I single mindedly pursued this and said this is as important activity, more important activity. Most people still has that kind of very discomfort. We will talk more about it. Uh, yeah. Let me just ask one more thing is that you did uh, hundreds of projects in the 80s under the auspices of your department, right? 80s and 90s. 80s and 90s. You yourself would have been an example to so many other professors as to what is possible. So didn't it kind of set off a whole movement? I'll, I'll have to talk about it. I have to talk about, I have so far talked about till 86, 87, I, where I pretty much did it alone. Yeah. And 87, 88, two other faculty members joined me at IIT Madras, Dr. Bhaskar Ramurthy and Tim, Dr. Professor Timothy Gonzalez. I need to talk about both of them. I need to talk about how we worked together and built telephony and how we actually the back to that whole thing, why should you wait for ATS for telephony? I need to talk about that story. And I need to talk about how that story was probably much bigger story than what I did earlier. And yet also showed the biggest obstacle that you face in India. So what everybody else was seeing is both how you, what you can achieve and what are the obstacles that you can face. This obstacle that you can face was too much for most people. Who can fight these obstacles? And I need to talk. I, uh, I need to talk. I can go into detail. I can actually tell you the story with names of people, including politician, industrialist, and everybody. Uh, and that did, in some manner, caused a lot of issues. I'll today probably end by telling you one little story which went through all this. By 94-95, I had started, this whole thing had become much bigger, whatever I was doing, in a small way, it become much bigger. I had started incubating companies. I was actually creating companies which had some value and in some manner wealth creation. One of the professor in my department, who I looked up most, Professor Radhakrishna Rao, he was probably my biggest supporter, guide, mentor, all throughout. Very bright person in analog circuits. And somehow he had kind of as if I had adopted me and in some manner backed me. He came one day to me and he told me there is a feeling that what you are doing here in the electrical engineering department and in IIT Madras is not right. I said, why? He said, you know, IIT is a place to pursue Saraswati. Suppose the worshippers of Saraswati supposed to pursue Vidya. You know, what you have done is bringing Lakshmi. And he told me, you know, the Lakshmi and Saraswati does not get along well together. You are creating a situation which will hurt and destroy IIT. 
और हर्ट आया कि मैं इट सो हिट मी इट हिट मी एंड ही इज टेलिंग मी विथ ऑल नाइस विथ ऑल इज नॉट एंग्री एन आई डेंट नो वॉट टू से I thought about it quite a bit. What days it troubled me, and somewhere I resolved. I don't know whether I ever talked back to him that yes, I have brought in Lakshmi, and this whole thing that Saraswati and Lakshmi cannot live together. This dichotomy that is being presented to me was wrong. Saraswati is the wealth, the goddess of knowledge, and Lakshmi is equally important goddess of wealth. The knowledge is supposed to be used to create wealth for the society, not for an individual. and wealth is not just money wealth is also nature and everything we are supposed to make this society flourish using our knowledge somewhere in my mind came to the conclusion that that's how our tradition always used to work our knowledge was used to do wealth creation for the society not necessarily for individuals and it is the two are together that's the reason both of them this conflict is all in mind people may have got into conflict people may have used wrong means of one or the other and that's a different thing this is not both are goddess and both are goddess of equal importance both are uh we are supposed to be with both and carry both in hand i say india will only flourish if the knowledge is used to create wealth and went back to what was reflected in setting up of iit and that perspective that it is supposed to transform society the wealth is required by india to remove po- elevate poverty wealth is required so that we develop self respect in india we develop technology ourselves in our always not always look to for, for for others uh, from others to take technology and this dichotomy i don't know where it has come from but the dichotomy is false and saraswati and lakshmi has to work together actually it is this we took several years to push around only 2001 we were able to set up a formal incubator at iit madras till that time everything that we did in terms of incubation of company was kind of some kind of adjustment some kind of you can even say under the table in the sense that we kept it in the wraps we would create companies we will create that but we will not talk about it and we will say we are doing project together and we will share license fee royalty that's the way we went about doing this so this was not acceptable till 2001 so if i could do it if i face so much of problem in spite of so much of success also i can see that till that time no other person no other iit no other faculty would be able to do this and break this kind of uh, kind of barrier fascinating because to me that incubator in 2001 is what ultimately fulfill the dream of nehru of the 50s it took 40 years 50 years for the dream to actually happen where academia and industry get together to solve the actual problems of india you will see even more as i talk more you will see how it evolves that was the early period how the incubators grew and how the industry academia interaction will grow and it is only now we are talking about industry academia innovation all the way to entrepreneurship and large scale commercialization hmm? wealth creation hmm? terrific i think we had a terrific first session